right. So welcome everybody. Today is the October 20th um, teaching and learning call. And um, today's agenda, I think we're going to do a Jirapalooza because we don't have a um, designated topic or speaker. So we'll be diving into a few of the Jiras in our list. And I see Christina is here. That's good because some of these were suggested by her. Maybe she can walk us through a few of them. Um, so we'll start off uh, as usual with a, um, a quick uh, round of announcements. So the Sakai Virtual Conference is coming up very soon, November 10th. That's a Wednesday, but it actually it doesn't conflict. It falls in between um, the Wednesdays of the teaching and learning call in November. So, um, so we'll still have both of our November meetings going forward as planned, and then November 10th falls right in the middle. Um, so if you've not yet registered, I encourage you to do so. Registration is only $5, thanks to our um, generous sponsors, Learning Experience and Longsight. And um, we've got a pretty good program shaping up. Um, we do have several workshops that are going to be offered this year instead of a keynote. So I'm going to paste the link to the workshop page on the virtual conference website into the chat here. Um, if you go there, you'll see some descriptions of the different workshops that are happening during the day. And we tried to target them to various audiences so that um, people could pick one that was most applicable to them and wouldn't have too many difficult choices on which one to attend in a given time slot. So um, in addition to the workshops, <clears throat> we're gonna have several Excuse me, I'm losing my voice a little bit. <clears throat> We're going to have several rounds of um, lightning talks. So we'll have three different rounds of lightning talks throughout the day. And that's where all of the community presentations will be happening. They'll be fast paced and um, <clears throat> should be an interesting uh, selection of, of topics. So um, in other news, we did um, begin migrating to Atlassian Cloud for JIRA and Confluence. Um, I don't know how many of you are in JIRA a lot, but um, it's been a little unstable on, on Woosh, our, our, our current um, hosting provider. And um, Woosh is actually phasing out their Atlassian support uh, for hosting. And um, the licensing for JIRA and Confluence for the self-hosted um, version of it is actually being phased out by Atlassian, which is why Wish is kind of getting rid of that um, branch of their business. Um, so long story short, the support has not been great <laughs> on Wish. So we've been trying to decide when was the opportune time to move and we recently cut the um, Sakai 22 branch. So that seemed like a good time. And we were experiencing again, some more outages on Woosh with, uh, with JIRA. So we went ahead and moved. Now JIRA has been migrated and everything came over pretty well um, as far as issues and attachments. People will have to redo their filters or reconfigure their dashboards if they have any personal dashboards set up because those did not transfer over. Um, but the Confluence migration has been a little bit problematic. It errored out a couple times. So we're still troubleshooting that. So we're still on the old um, Confluence for now, but we are in the process of migrating it over to cloud. Um, so you may see some changes in Confluence soon, but currently um, it's still running in the old version of uh, the Woosh supported. Um, Confluence server. So, uh, but yeah, like I said, the, we're troubleshooting it. Hopefully we'll be off of Wish completely very soon and then everything will be hosted in cloud. Um, but if you've not already logged into cloud, your account should have transferred over, but I know some people needed to like have a, an invite resent or reset their password, things like that. So if you have any trouble getting in, um, let me know and I'll, I can uh, check on your account and see anything that needs to be straightened out there. All right. Any um, questions about either of those things?
violence. Okay, I guess not. Um, so I guess we will go ahead and uh, start off with our Jira's. And let me let me go ahead and do a screen share so that there's something to look at. I wanted. So you should be seeing my agenda. I haven't switched these links over. These are the old links. They will redirect automatically. Um, so uh, slowly but surely, we need to swap these out for the new ones. Um, so as I mentioned, Christina is here. Christina, did you want to talk about some of the ones that you suggested first before we go to the others in the list? Um, that's entirely up to you. I'm fine just going down the list as is, or if you want to jump mine to the top, it doesn't matter to me. We'll jump yours to the top since you're here. So we'll go to this one here, um, SAK45602. Right. So this is about student uh, response displays, and even if option is not selected. So um, you want to give us some background? Um. Just generally in the grading and feedback, it, uh, if you don't have the student submission or the student response option checked, but you're seeing some of the other things like the part scores, the assess, you know, the other scores, it's showing the um, student response anyway. So is that an option that's worth, I guess, should uh, having that unchecked disable the student feedback or student response? And if it shouldn't, should that checkbox be there? And I don't know. I see. So you're looking at this logged in as the student, right? Yeah. The one on the left is the feedback settings for the test. Mm -hmm. And you can see I had student response unchecked. Right. But when the student's viewing the feedback, they're still seeing that they selected A for question one and wrote, I'm a little teapot for question two. OK. Um, so I'm wondering. I guess I'm is there an option is there a any sort of pedagogical reason why you would ever release the question and not the student's answer i guess is the first question christina and, a question a question that i have is i noticed that in the screenshot which you took you have student's question and part scores released I'm wondering if you only released the assessment scores, whether the student response would then be hidden. That is, revealing the question score forces the student response to be shown. Entirely possible. I didn't uh, do too much checking because I was actually in the process of testing something else and kind of ran into this one. Yep. I'm pretty sure those are independent. Well, and the checkboxes imply they are independent, but I'm wondering if there is a relation between the two. No, I, th I think it, it would just, I mean, they would be able to tell if they got it right, but they wouldn't see how they answered. I'm pretty certain that they actually are completely under, because showing the question score um, just fills in the little box. I got two points out of two, or I got zero out of two. I'll test, but I do think it seems nonsensical that if we have a checkbox that it doesn't actually take action. Um, personally, I can't see why you would want to hide the student's own response from themselves, but uh, there may be some institutions out there or some instructors out there who desire it. Somebody somewhere does, I'm sure. I, I don't particularly see a reason either, um, Adam, but I'm just 
going by, by what I recall when I've played around with it, that I think those are actually independent choices that are not, neither one's dependent on the other. This is Samago. For everything in Samago, somebody out there somewhere has a need for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> so it's got so many features. Um, yeah, I, I personally can't see a, a compelling reason to not show the student their own response either, but I think maybe some people were worried about people, you know, being able to kind of easily print all the correct answers, so. Well, this doesn't show the correct answer, it shows the student's answer. Yeah, so but the student yeah. would know if they got it right or not. So by process of elimination, or if they scored really well on the test, they would have almost all the right answers. So, um, it looks like a bug though, because I agree, I don't think it should be dependent upon that other question and part score. Um, it should just give them the score, but not show the answer if you don't have that selected. Yeah. Um, the reason I wanted to throw it at the group was there was a really old JIRA. Mm -hmm. um, um, I actually linked it, SAK5478, to eliminate yeah. the student response type feedback. Ah, oh, okay. So you know, there was a request way back yeah. in the in the day to just take out. When that was feedback. this created? Two thousand six. Yeah, there's quite a bit of conversation about removing it. I mean, I, I could see a, a use case where the instructor wants the students to be able to see the questions for review purposes, but not see how they answered or, or what the correct answers are. I guess I can't see a time when the instructor would want the students to see the questions again, but not be able to see how they answered it the first time. They might not mm -hmm. want to show the scores or the right answer. So, so what does the group think? Would it be more appropriate to remove the checkbox since it's not actually doing anything? Um, or fix it so that it works as we imagine that it was intended originally, even though we don't think that the, that's a used feature very often? I did just do a test on 22, since that's what I had up for doing some QA testing. If mm -hmm. no feedback options are checked, um, it does just show the question. It does not show the student's response. So it looks like something with checking an op a different option triggers that. Yeah. I've just been testing on my own 21 instance, and I did for a numeric response question. Granted, it wasn't a multiple choice question. It does seem as if you can hide the student response 
if only the assessment score is released. So is it the student question and part scores that triggers the student uh, answer to be shown? So I released the student response and then was able to see it. I'm now trying student question and part scores and not student response in order to see whether or not I'm able to see the student response when uh, question scores are released. One second. Yes, releasing question in part scores shows the student answer on a numeric response question. But if the question score is removed, then the student is not able to see their answer. So there is an interaction there, it appears. Mm -hmm. Do they, does it show the question, uh, student response without? The score on the question, um, if you just have like the total assessment score. Trying that now. If you have the overall assessment score released and no other options, then the student answer is not revealed. What about the overall assessment score and the student response? We'll see well, what the show, answer if you, show, they if you show the student response, the student response is shown. Right. But does it show the question scores? Like, do they know which ones they got right or wrong? Um, you know what the question value is, but you don't know what the question score is. Although I, I really, I honestly can't see a reason why you'd want to hide if they got the question right or wrong. <laughs> it seems kind of silly. Um, it also looks like it automatically, like the uh, feedback or comments for individual questions also triggers the student submitted answers to be seen. So it looks like it. The, the, the feedback you said? Yeah, the equivalent of question level feedback with the new uh, settings option. Ah, uh, okay. They, they reworded the settings since I took my screenshots. Mm. Um. Yeah, I mean, it seems like that option is definitely not working as intended um, because it's not isolated from the other. Yeah. Checkbox. Like I said, the reason I just threw it into this group was to pretty much ask the same question that the old junior do, did. Do we need, we need that button? Yeah. I, for my part, I think we could get rid of it because A, it's not working, and B, I don't really see a lot of people needing to use it. Um, I don't think anybody has presented a valid reason why they would have to have it. So this is a stupid question. Is it easier to remove it or is it easier to control the presentation of the checkbox with, God help me, a property? Because then you could instantiate showing or hiding the checkbox with a property in case you needed to bring it back. Yeah, but it's not working. <laughs> it, 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 it it's is working, working if you don't check certain options. Correct. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, I mean, that would preserve the feature. Um, I just I hate to add another property. Um, also, too, that wouldn't fix. Right now, it's not working as expected. It's having that unchecked. There's still times when it's triggered by the other boxes being checked. Mm -hmm. So I guess the question is, do we fix it so the unchecked works as expected? Or do we fix it to make it always checked if you're releasing the questions? 
I seem to remember a discussion on a prior teaching and learning call, and this could be an invented memory, that we discussed if you release whether you got the question right or wrong, then the students should know how they answered. So I'm wondering if in a prior teaching and learning call, we created this behavior. And then it had unintended consequences. Possibly. I wonder if we could fix this by rewording this option to say. Students question response. And part score. Right. Because then it more accurately reflects what's actually happening. But then there's no way to check the student response if they want it for student response and correct response, but not the part scores. You still want to be able to allow them to see the students to see how they answered, but not whether it was correct or not. Right. And releasing the part scores tells them at least whether they got it right or not. So those still have to be decoupled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If we leave if we leave this option, it, it needs fixing. Because there's still some weirdness going on there. Yeah. Or do we just need a warning saying, well, if you check this, it will show the student response as well. That's another yeah, approach. It to fix it so having that unchecked or unchecked is actually listened to. Yeah. It is listened to, it's just it's brought back if another option is selected. So part of me likes um, Wilma's suggestion because it's the path of least resistance and we just change the wording for students question and part score to include students response, students question, comma, response and part scores. And I like Oxford commas, so I put a second comma. In, but. <laughs> Yeah, I do too. <laughs> that kind of makes it imply that the only time they see the student response is if that box is checked, which is not true. Well, no, you could show the student response and then not show question and part scores. Yeah. So there are two different ways to show the student's response. Either show them their response and the correct response, but not show them scores, or show them the student's question, response, and part scores. That seems incredibly convoluted from the instructor's perspective. It may be, but there are reasons why it's there for other institutions. Yeah, so then would the best solution be then to treat it like a bug and fix that having that student response unchecked should hide student response in all other cases? Mm. I mean, that would be the most straightforward from the end user perspective, I think is to yep. make it work the way it, it's in, you know, intended. It appears to, yeah. Mm -hmm. That they truly are independent options. Yeah. Always. Yeah, so unchecking the student response seems like it's getting overridden by some of the other selections, but it should not. It should maintain that regardless of what else is checked. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to modify the JIRA or modify the report to say that what really needs to be, be changed is the behavior of students question and part scores when instead created, that is also showing the student response and it shouldn't unless student response is checked. Mm -hmm. Should I do that or someone else? I'll change it. Thank you. Well, thank you guys. Um, Samago is always fun <laughs> to dig into because there's, there's so many uh, little weedy paths we may take. Um, but, um, all right, so let's uh, move on. And, and Christina, you're going to update this one? Yes. You could uh, add the, the TL reviewed label to it. That would be great. 
Okay, we'll do. Um, all right, so can we do another Christina one? We've got 42046 and 41005. This one says coming from you, Dayton. Is that something that they're already working on? That was the last update um, I saw from it that um, back in August, Leah said the University of Dayton has developed a similar feature and would like to share it back with the community, has some demo videos. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, so this one is more of a just an awareness piece because yay, <laughs> you Dayton developed it. So I remember looking at these. I can't remember if we looked at them during a teaching and learning call or not, but um, but I remember seeing that, that she had added that to the Jira. So that's very cool that they took that on. Um, and I believe um, that they're going to be sharing some more information about some of their plans for the rubrics. Um, during the virtual conference because there's going to be a lightning talk. So um, look forward to more information on this. So this one, actually, I don't think we need to talk about because it's already happening. Yep. I think I put it on the list before Dayton said they were bringing it. Actually, let me leave that there. I don't remember what I did. One. Okay, so this one, I just want to make a note that um, we reviewed it. So I remember which ones to move to the parking lot later. Okay, so this one we reviewed. All right, so let's go to this one, 42046. Okay, grade, grade book item overview. I, th I think um, this one has we've talked about before, but I don't know if we ever came to a consensus. I remember um, looking through the comments on this, um, trying to figure out what was the, yeah, I, the been, end result. I, I've kind and, of been advocating for it for a little bit because a lot of my faculty, honestly, if they could have kept gradebook classic, um, they would they still would, be on it. <laughs> still be on it, because having in their their argument is having a vertical list of all the gradebook items, how many points it's worth, what category it's in. Um, my instructors will normally have all the gradebook items created at the start of the semester, so being able to easily check the total score, how many points total are in the gradebook, help them make sh double check that they had everything set up correctly. just cycling through some of the pictures that were attached. I think these are all different takes on how to solve this issue, right? So there were a mm -hmm. few different ideas floated about different places to put it. Um, but basically what people want is just kind of an inventory of everything in the grade book and the, the number of points that they're worth. What um, categories they're in. Um, yeah. yep. Pr pretty much a instructor view of the grade book and all the stuff if the students and their points do not exist. Right. So um, for those of you on the call, where do you guys think would make the most sense for them to live? Um, Cause it looks like we've got a, a plethora of opinions here. So um, I honestly, I don't know. I can, I can pull up a great book instance. And look. Yeah, I think we've argued this one back and forth a couple different times. Yeah. It's been a while though, so let's uh, look. There was a, I know there were suggestions. It should be a tab. It should be, or well, not a tab, but a one of the little buttons, like where we've got view columns, item order. So here's a grade book of in, in Sakai 21. Um, so there have been a few different suggestions. Um, there's this item order 
and I think was one of the suggestions is that somehow incorporating it into that modal. There's um, there's also the bulk edit, which gives you um, you know a list. It doesn't give you like points or anything. Um, so there, I think one of the options there was to add another button up here that said view gray book. Um, what was it? View gray book items, which would give you just like the, the list with just the stuff you want. Um, and <sighs> there was one of having it as like a, another option here. View. I I think at this point, I like the idea of um, incorporating it into the bulk edit um, because, you know, that, that was something that you could, if, God, it's been so long since I looked at Gradebook Classic um, or, or Gradebook 2 or whatever the heck it was um, that we used to use, I'm trying to remember if, if on that page, when you saw the list of, of the items, it was also easy to not only to see the point values, but also to, to decide whether you wanted to release them or include them in the course grade calculation. Um, mm -hmm. So I think, um, I, I think when- There was an edit button for each one of the items. There wasn't a bulk. No, oh, okay. It's been too long. But in any case, um, I think this actually came up before the bulk edit modal was available. But I think now that it is, I think that's the place where it makes most sense to just kind of display the point values and, and, and category totals and overall total and percentages if, if you're working in with weighted categories. Right. So I, you, you'd add extra columns here, I guess, with that information? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I am going to play devil's advocate here, though, because okay. you put it in bulk edit. I, I mean, I agree with you that it seems that this, from a tabular basis, is where it should go. Um, I wouldn't think to go to bulk edit in order to get my gradebook overview, though. And I'm also wondering... Well, we relabel it, then. I'm wondering about printability because this is a pop-up window and I don't know whether or not instructors would want to print the overview as an artifact. Wilma, can you pull up the original um, screenshots that were attached to that ticket? I had named them like cat only, cat weight. And I think All right. so which, which one would you like me to look at? They're, they're on the very far end. Um, these are the, oh, there's more pages, okay. Um, yeah, one of those. Those are the ones, I, the little mo pretty mock-ups I originally made to try to incorporate. Right. Like all of the information. Mm-hmm. Let me zoom in a little so you can see that better. Because. That it. All right, well, I guess I won't do that. Um, ah. Sorry, I didn't mean to lose that image. Okay. Um, oh, for just in here. Uh, there we go. Um, okay, so this is very much like what, like Gradebook Classic kind of look like. Yeah, and that's what I was going for when I mm -hmm. sort of created this. Well, and I agree, I like the mock-up, but now I'm, you know, Tiffany is not on call, but I'm wondering about ADA. Mm -hmm. Just because of the iconography. I, I snagged those from the existing gradebook icon, so I imagine they could be set up, you know, to display. Yeah, I mean, the existing, like when you go to view student, you, you have some of that iconography here. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I snippeted. Mm -hmm. And actually, you know what, this view here for an individual student is somewhat similar to this view here. It, it is very similar, but this should be the full instructor's view, so including all the items right. that are not released to students. Yeah, and it would have a little bit different information than an individual student one, but it kind of seems like we could model it after that because that one also has a print function. 
Oh, that's an interesting idea. So effectively do a grade summary for no student. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically another tab. I don't know if it'd be here, but a grade another, summary for instructor. Yeah, a grade summary for course or site or something. Overall grade summary. I don't know what you'd call it. But it would look kind of like this, but it would have the, you know the information specific for the instructor and it would have a print option. The one thing I would want to make sure is we had the ability for, you know, the seeing how many points total um, was mm -hmm. in the class. Because um, example, all about me, um, a lot of instructors who they'll make their entire class out of a thousand points. So an mm -hmm. easy way for them to see if the grade book is right is, is the course total out of a thousand points. Yep. Right. Since, since the students and show only the number of points that are graded, you know, you can't tell if you've got a thousand points without giving each, uh, giving, you know, picking a test student and giving them the maximum points and seeing if it comes out to a thousand. Right. Yeah. So up here where it's got course grade, you would probably have like total points or something. I think that's where the total points and shows up if they're released to the student, correct? Correct. Yeah. So if, if the, the, the no student view of, a, of the grade book, um, had it up here for the instructor only. I think that would work for those. Well, I, I, ideally, you'd want to see category subtotals as well. Yeah, I've got screenshot mockups showing that too, and it would be the same way the students see the categories, you know, heading, mm -hmm. percentage. Yeah. Wait, oops. Window. Yeah, categories. Um, again, I, I think that that student print view like this is a good model um, for the instructor version that matches what Christina has here. Mm -hmm. has, you know, the extra information that the instructor would get that students wouldn't. And it would be for the class. It wouldn't be for any particular user. So where would it make sense to get to that? Let's say we have that screen all mocked up. Um, where would you intuitively go to pull up that information? Well, I can I can think of three places to put it. One would be as a one of the buttons, like where view columns, item order, bulk edit are as a tab or somehow within settings. I'm not sure how you would do it within settings. I don't know if I'd put it within settings because part of what would make it very easy too is if there was from wherever this overview was, um, an easy option to edit a gradebook item if you realize, you know, whoops, I didn't stick this in the right category or I didn't stick it in any category. Instead okay. of having to go back to the spreadsheet view and find that column and click on it and go to edit item details to just easily, you know, click the item name or an edit button in that overview and have that little edit item details window pop up. This is kind of a nit, but I was looking at gradebook to figure out where to go for it. And add gradebook item is a really attractive chunky button on the left hand side, but then you've got a ton of white space before you filter on who you're viewing. And as a result, it almost seems like bulk edit is in the wrong place because that has to do with column view and the item order. You almost want add gradebook item, gradebook overview, and bulk edit to be a series of three buttons right next to each other. In my honest opinion. Yeah, and that makes sense because it's an edit function. Um, I don't think 
Uh, item so is item order. Yeah, you reordered, yeah. This is just kind of a show hide filter, so it's a little different. But um, maybe it's that ad is important and should stand alone. Yeah, if we included, a, um, and I'm just going back to this one because it's closest thing even though it's not perfect if we had something kind of like this um where you could view everything with a link to edit individual columns it kind of seems like the bulk edit should either be part of that or it becomes slightly redundant to have the bulk well access. except the bulk edit allows you to to turn multiple things on and off at the same time yeah, without having to edit individuals. Yeah, what I was envisioning for the edit screen was not a any sort of bulk edit, but a way just to hit a, a pretty much a shortcut to the edit item details mm -hmm. window. So it'd be a one at a time edit, which would still annoy instructors if they had, you know, 50 items that they just had to release. Yeah. So maybe next to each thing you could have an edit option. The, um, the icon or maybe a label to let people know they can edit each item individually. And then if they do, I guess it would just take them straight to the to this. To that yep. item. Exactly. Okay, so what about the placement that Adam suggested of kind of having a, a big fat overview button right here next to gradebook add gradebook item um would that be the best place for this sort of thing i, I kind of feel like the add gradebook item is the important button and i kind of agree with it should stand alone i'd put it either over with item order and Agreed. or so. it tab up at the top with like import export and settings yeah, I kind of want to avoid tabs because we're trying to get rid of tabs in 23. Um, not to say that you know couldn't live somewhere else, but we're trying to, to redo the UI in, in Trinity to make it fewer tabs up here. So if we could find another home for it that's not a tab, I think that would be preferable. And probably a button with the other buttons. Yeah. So what would make sense for a label for the button. Over Does gra mm. gradebook overview makes sense. Over yep. Overview, gradebook overview. Okay. Any other thoughts from anybody that's been quiet? Terry, Jennifer. Guys, have any opinion? Jordy, Naomi, you guys have been real quiet. I mean, I think gradebook overview says what it is. So, but it's also big. So I don't know if it'd be bigger than that. Add gradebook item button. Mm -hmm. Well, we have here item order. Would item overview be better or does it need to say gradebook? I'm just thinking mm -hmm. items a little bit shorter. <laughs> I think as long as it has the word overview, it gives the idea. Yeah. Um, so just to kind of summarize right now, at, at this point, anyway, we're all sort of like in the idea of a button over here that says either grade book overview or item overview, um, in this space near these other buttons. And that when you open it up, you get something that's 
similar to this view here with a print option, but has all of the information um, that uh, is included here for the instructor and which also um, allows you to click on an individual item or select an edit link for each of the gradebook items to edit them individually. Is that accurate representation of our collective thinking at this point? <laughs> I'd say so. Although I I'll, I'll I will say that that the being able to edit is not a deal breaker. I'd like to at least be able to see the stuff, even if I can't edit from that particular screen. Mm -hmm. Christina, what about you? Is that a deal breaker for you? The edit. It it's a very nice to have, but it is not an absolute need to have. All right, well, you know what? I will take this away as a to-do for me. I can mock it up based on the combination of things that we just talked about. I'll add another comment on the JIRA with the latest set of um, images, and I'll, I'll add a note that, um, that that's kind of what we the group today came up with. So um, I'll take that away as a to-do for me that I'll do after the call. Does anybody else have any thoughts on this one? So, um, we've only got about 10 minutes left. Um, I thought maybe we would take a couple minutes to talk about our upcoming meetings to see if there's any topics that people want to um, see on a particular date or, um, you know, if there are any meetings that we want to cancel. Because I know a lot of times in, when we get later into December, sometimes people are, are having end of term and, you know, leaving for holiday breaks and whatnot. So are these dates still ones where we plan to have um, a teaching and learning call or are there any that we need to cancel? Wilma, is, Josh is probably going to want to do roadmap on one of those later ones, isn't he? Probably, yeah. My guess would be December 1st is a tentative. Possibly the November one, but just put it down. Um, now, November 17th is the week before Thanksgiving, so it's not the week of. So I think most people will be around, right? Mm -hmm. um, and November 3rd is, is our next meeting, so um, that one's coming up pretty quick. What about the December one? Let's kind of work backward. Um, do we want to meet on the 15th, or are folks already in vacation mode by that? I think that's into the semester mode, and I think we have the advantage that the first Wednesday is at the beginning of the month for each of these next two months. So mm -hmm. I don't think the 15th is necessarily too late in the uh, month, though. I'm also, I mean, I, I think we can easily cancel it if there's not critical mass around that. Right. Okay, well, we'll keep it for now. Like you said, it is early in the month. If it gets around the 18th, the 20th, that, that's when people are kind of um, dropping off. <laughs> but uh, the 15th is probably okay. Um, so does anyone have any suggestions for topics that they would like for any of those dates we, other than roadmap? We came up with uh, something in the last, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit um, in working in dark mode. <clears throat> when you work in dark mode, you can't really use your CSS um, okay. because it reverses the colors that you've put in your CSS. 
So I don't know if it's a whole meeting, but if uh, somebody's already worked out a way to um, keep your CSS over the dark mode thing, thing um, you know, maybe just some tricks and tips in working in dark mode that um, may be unintended consequences of going there. I tried it this morning because I thought it would be easier on my eyes and it was until I went into my sites and everything looked black or totally white because the colors and the CSS just didn't work together. So do you have any suggestions for I don't know, tips, but, but are somebody, you looking for somebody to provide? Yeah, I'm looking for somebody to address that. Um, the uh, Maybe the people who developed the dark mode, maybe they know how to, uh, I don't know, um, make some way that, because you don't know if the person that you're giving putting out the course to wants to work in dark mode, but if you CSS code can't work, um, you, you, then you think, well, maybe dark mode's not a place to go. <clears throat> and I've lost the JIRA number, but another JIRA to put on the list is, is that we need to try to get prioritized is the one that's supposed to fix the problem that we're having the checkbox links break on iteration. So every time we have to go in and redo the checkbox links, and I don't know which one that is, but it's very annoying when you uh, when you exist on iteration. Yeah. You can get me the link to that. Yeah. I'm happy to add it into our Let me list. see. I think yeah, they've got it in an email oh. thread somewhere. Right. Well, I'll I'll ask around and see if I can find somebody knowledgeable in CSS. See if they'd be willing. Maybe Michael. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, or if you know of anybody, if anybody in the call knows of anybody that's you know, good at that sort of thing, that could provide some tips. Um, and then we'll uh, we'll tentatively do roadmap in December, but we could do it earlier if if Josh would like to use one of those earlier meetings. I haven't talked to him, so I don't want to book him too early. <laughs> so we'll see which which one he prefers for that. And are there any other topics that you guys can think of that you would like to discuss or maybe see if we can get a speaker to um, to talk about? We might be better informed following the Sakai virtual conference if there's something that people in the TNL group would like to learn more about afterwards. Yeah, that's a very good point. I we'll have a whole bunch of lightning talks to choose from, so we can maybe ask some of those folks to come back and uh, talk a little bit more at one of our future calls. So, um, so that's that's a great idea, Adam. Um, also, I spoke recently with Inga uh, Dunkfort from the Xerti community, and uh, Xerti is interested in maybe trying to get involved with some of our teaching and learning calls, so they might want to do a presentation on some of the features in Xerti for, um, if, if you've not used it, it's like a, um, it's sort of like a third party tool that you can create things and, and put them in a course, um, like a a content creation type of tool. So you can create different types of learning objects and put them into lessons or what have you. Um, so they might be able to do a, a, a presentation, one of those dates on some of the uh, latest things in Xerti. All right, so we are just about out of time. So I'm gonna, unless anybody has anything else they would like to talk about. Thank you very much for your coordination. Hope you have a great right. day. Great. Yep. You took the words right out of my mouth, Adam. <laughs> well, <we're not laughs> Thanks, everybody. So much discussion today. <laughs> Nothing like being in the spotlight. <laughs> Thank you, Christine. I appreciate you um, 
talking us through those. All right, take care, guys. Talk to you soon. So long.